In this session, we are going to learn about the process related commands, namely the ps command, fg command, bg command, the jobs command and the kill command. Before we start learning about this command, let us try to understand the difference between the source program, the executable file and a process. The program what you can see out here, this is a program written in C programming language which is a high level programming language. High level programming languages are a human readable form, but the code which is written in high level language cannot be understood by the machine directly. So we require converter which will accept the code from high level language and convert it into machine understandable low level code. That converter program we call it as compilers. The compiler what we use depends upon the high level language what you have used. Here I have used C programming language so I require C compiler to convert it to machine code. Now let us try to compile this particular code from the source code to the machine code. Here you can just observe I have this simple file called as hello.c in this particular directory. To compile this particular program we write gcc space the file name dot c. This particular command will accept this source code which is hello.c and then convert it to machine code and the executable file name will be a dot out. Let us try to look into this. It has created a dot out. a dot out is executable code which is residing in the disk. This is not at a process. This is not under execution. This is executable code residing in the disk. If you want to run this particular program, we have to write dot slash a dot out. When you write this command dot slash a dot out, then when you press the enter key, the executable code which is in the disk will get loaded into the main memory, starts executing and during execution we say that it is a process. So we can say a process is a program under execution. Now once we have understood the difference between the source code, the executable code and the process, now let us move into the commands. If you want to know the different processes running in a machine, we take the help of ps command. We can uh, supply a lot of options with ps command, but in the simplest form we can just use ps without any options. Now when you just write ps and press the enter key, this is giving me two processes. One is the ps command, the other one is the bash. It is giving the information about the process id, the name of the process as well as the terminal. Now it is only giving me a few informations related to this process. If you want to get a little bit more information, we can use the option hyphen f along with this ps. You can just observe along with the information what it is giving uh, with the ps command, it gives me the information about the user who has launched this particular program, the parent process id as well as the start time of the program. And as you can observe here, this particular process are started by the user called as varsity and the process id of the bash is 3582 and the process id of ps command is 4086 and this is a parent process of bash and this is a parent process of ps command and if you just observe carefully the parent process id of ps command is the same as the process id of the bash command it means that ps command is been launched by the bash shell. So bash shell is the parent process for the ps command and this is the start time when this particular programs were started. Fine. If you want to know all the processes running in your machine then we can take the help of the option e. This is going to give me all the processes running in your machine. Yes we can also combine this option f along with this e. This will give me detailed information about all the processes which are running in my machine. Right. Now if you want to launch any program from the terminal we can launch. Like for example, I would like to launch a gedit program through the terminal. I will write gedit. This is going to launch the gedit program which is a text editor wherein I can write any of the text. I can uh, save it and you can even close this. 
But what you can observe here is when this gedit is opened, at the same time, you are not getting this prompt back. You're not able to execute any other command as long as this gedit is under execution. Only when you close this particular application, then what happens is you get the prompt back. The reason is whenever you launch any program by default, it's going to launch as a foreground process. And when you launch a program as a foreground process, it blocks the terminal till you complete that particular program. But if you want the prompt back immediately, then we need to launch that particular program as a background process. In order to launch the program as a background process, we will write this program name and we will just suffix with the ampersand symbol. So here it's going to launch this gedit, but what you can observe is we get the prompt back. So let me just resize this. I can execute any of the commands on this prompt. At the same time, I can also uh, interact with this gedit. I can type any of the code in the gedit uh, editor. Now, if you want to see what are the processes which are running now, which are launched from this particular terminal, I can just write PS. You can just observe that I could also see this gedit. But yes, the gedit is launched as a background process. If you want to see the list of processes which are running as a background process, we can take the help of jobs command. The jobs command will tell you all the processes which are running as a background. And you can just observe here that your program is running as a background process. If you want, you can bring this process as a foreground process. So if you want to bring any program which is running as a background process to foreground, we take the help of a command called as FG and then we specify the job number. We run this. Now gedit has come as a foreground process, right? But yes, we are not able to execute any other command because gedit is, is running as a foreground. Now, you can terminate gedit from the uh, terminal or we can even stop this. So what I'll try to do it is I'll try to stop this particular process. I'll not terminate. When I say stop, suspend this. Now here, in order to stop any process, we need to use control Z. When you use control Z, you can just observe that that particular process has stopped. So now I'd like to just observe this PS command. I can still see gedit is still under execution. Now I'd like to also see this jobs. Here you can just observe that we do have gedit, but the status is not running, the status is stopped. When the program is stopped state, it will not respond. If you can just click out here, you can just observe that it is not responding. Why it is not responding? Because it is being stopped. Any stop program can be restarted or can say we can continue the process by using the help of the FG command or the BJ command. If you want to run this particular program as a foreground process, we write FG followed by the job number. Or if you want to continue this program as a background process, we write BG space job number. Now you can just observe that this gedit has become active again. So we learned how do we stop a process and then we also saw the status of the process which is stopped. The status says stopped. But again, if I just try to write jobs now, you can just see that it's saying that it is running. So we can bring any process which are running in the background to foreground with the help of FG command or any stop process can be continued in the background by using BG command. Now you can also kill a process through the command. Like I want to kill this uh, gedit through the command prompt. To kill a process, we take the help of a command called as kill followed by the process ID. The process ID of gedit is 4659. I'll write 4659. And you can just observe that the process is terminated. But there are some processes which will not terminate with the help of kill command. So in that case, we need to use kill followed by hyphen 9 and followed by process ID. Now this is called as forceful termination. Like I would like to terminate this particular terminal. So let me just try to know what is the process ID of this terminal. The process ID of uh, this particular terminal is 3582. I'll say kill 3582. You can just say it's not responding. Now I'll do the same thing with the option hyphen 9. And you can observe that it has terminated. It's called as forceful termination. Fine. 
let me start the terminal back. To understand more about this foreground and background process, I have taken one more program out here. This particular program is trying to read two numbers, perform the addition and print the value back onto the screen. That's a very simple program. I would like to compile this particular program and try to run this. GCC add.c and yes, as I said that we can give in a different executable file name instead of always getting a dot out. So for that we have to use the option hyphen o. Let me just say the executable file name what I wanted is add. Now I have executable file name by name add. The earlier uh, program we had a dot out but now I have the executable file name by name add. Now to run this add I will just write add. I am running it as foreground process and remember here it is waiting for an input. As long as you don't give the input, it will never continue further until you complete this particular program, you will never get the prompt back. So I can enter the numbers or if I leave it for hours together also what happens is like it will keep waiting for the input to be entered and once the input is entered, it will continue further and then complete this particular program. Fine. Now the same program, I'd like to launch it as a background process. Now before I could uh, launch this particular program as a background process, I'd like to add a small code out here for int i equal to 0, i less than 10, i plus plus, I'd like to write sleep of 1. So I'm trying to stop this particular program for 10 seconds before it could actually move into the uh, scanf statement. And in order to use this sleep, we have to use unistd.h. Right. Now, I'd like to recompile this particular program. To run this particular program as a background process, we write add ending with ampersand. So this will start this particular program as a background process. Here, you can just see it has given me the ID 5188. Now, I'd like to look at the jobs and you can just see out here as of now, it is running state. After this 10 seconds, you can just observe, I will try to just again run this jobs command. Here, you can just observe that it is in stop state. Why? Because after completion of 10 seconds, now it has gone to scanf and in scanf what has happened is like it is waiting for you to enter the input. But how do I pass an input for this particular program? Because this particular program is running as a background process. So I need to bring this in this foreground. So in order to bring this particular thing as foreground process, I will just write fg, the job number, and then I can enter the numbers, first number, second number, and after this, the program is terminated. Now you can just observe that the program is not present. So things what we learned in this particular program is the ps command can be used to see the processes. We have the option hyphen f, which will give me the information about the user as well as the parent process and start time along with the other basic informations then you can stop any uh, process which is running in the foreground by pressing this control Z and to look at all the processes which are running in the background we can use the command jobs any program which is running in the background can be brought back to the foreground uh, by using the fg command or if you want to run that stop program as a background process we use the bg command and then if you want to terminate any process we take the help of kill command wherein kill followed by the process id and we also have this option hyphen 9 which can be used along with the kill which is used to forcibly terminate a particular program. Thank you.